Hello and welcome to chapter 10, control the boot process, roll the intro. Like and subscribe, comment down below, it really helps the channel to grow. And that's enough for the intro. So this is going to be all about chapter 10, control the boot process, and it's going to be three subjects. Recover the root password, not by disorder, let's, let's put it on the correct order. Select the boot target, reset the root password, and repair file system issues at boot. I have covered the re reset root password and repair file system issues at boot. I had covered that on a separate video. I'm going to look it here. I'm going to put that in the comments below. I'm going to put it in the end screen. But if I if I forget, which um, I might, but that's how I am, just let me know all the comments below and I will correct that. But I have covered that on a separate video, so I will not cover that in, in this one because I already have covered. But I will cover the select boot target right now. So here you can see in, in the foreground you'll see the you'll see root uh, Rocky One's console, okay. In the background, you'll see Rocky One's physical console. So this is SSH in the, for, in the foreground. And in the background, you have the actual physical console of the server, because I'm going to do stuff here that actually is going to impact the physical console. And like that, you can actually see the things occurring. So let me get some root access first. And of course I typed a password, which is really short and I still managed to get it wrong. There we go. So yeah, so I'm going to, we're going to cover what what a boot target is and how can you set it so if you come from other more uh, older but not least important linux red hat Lin or other linuxes you're probably you are probably familiar with um with the term called the run level okay so that was before we had system d has our main process if you remember so system d is kind of uh, our our mothership here is a main process that manages everything else or most other things else, and in the, in the old days, and I, I, I keep I forget, but until you read rel six, I think rel six. So you had a we had a process called called um, the init. So at if you are using a, a Linux of of that old, or you are still using other Linuxes, which is perfectly valid. If you do the same thing like this, the PS means f pipe more. You will not see systemd as your main process, but you'll see the init. So the, the init process, it's not that, it's just get, got replaced in some Linuxes by systemd, and that's fine. I'm going to cover systemd here because that's what it's about, this, this training is all about. It's about the rel9 and it's systemd, kind of the main thing, but it feels rel9, but this is, was, this is way back systemd and way forward systemd also. So yeah, at the time we had we had init, which was the, the the process that manages all the stuff. It was init. Right now it's system D, but at the time we had we had init and we had run levels. Okay, so run levels were kind of um, a states where the machine could be. Okay, so run levels were, were were a state where the machine could be found. So imagine this. I'm going to say something that again the most anxious of you will just be uh, completely pissed, but I don't care. So for example, in Windows, we have safe mode or other all or some of other recovery options, safe mode with networking, safe mode without networking, and all of that. So run levels or similar things, I'm not saying it's the same thing, calm, calm yourself, calm yourself, okay? But for the less experienced, it's just a way for them to get, get an idea of what, what we are talking about, all right? so. It was a machine state. It was a state where the machine could be like a hardware profile, a software profile. And we had a few. So run level zero was the shutdown uh, state, shutdown. You had the, the, the you had the um, run level one was called single user. I, I don't know if I remember all, but let me try. Two was unused on rel, unused on rel at least. Uh, because this this could vary between Linuxes, so these are the ones that were using RHEL, but other Linuxes could use different numbers for different states. Three was single use, not use. It was uh, let's call it normal, normal, but no GUI, no GUI. Okay. Then you have four, which I completely forget. <laughs> I forget what four was, and five was normal with GUI. It's not that important because uh, because um, I forget number four. I truly forget what number four was. 
mm, never mind. What what they were actually most important were the zero, which is shut down. Okay. Oh, I forgot one, and it was it had six, which was reboot. Okay. Okay. So the menu the menu ones for now are going to be shut down and reboot. So at the time, I'm not going to do that because I will just cause a shutdown or a reboot. If you did in it zero, the system would just power off. If you did in it six, the system would just reboot. Okay. Or any other of the substates. One, two, three, four, or five. Four wasn't used. Two, I forget what it what it is. Uh, I think. Oh my god, I'm so stubborn. No four wasn't used. That's that's correct. And two was normal, no networking. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, this is not, this is correct. Okay, okay. So unused. Cool. So yeah, this is a, this this one is correct. Shut down. Zero was shut down. One single user. Two normal. Two normal. No no networking. Three normal. No GUI. Four was unused. Five normal with GUI. And six was reboot. Now th this is correct. This is actually absolutely correct. Okay, that's why we did init zero or init six. These two would just uh, start a, a shutdown or start a reboot or any other of the substates. But now, but now, even though if you do init zero, it will power off. If I do init six, it will reboot. Um, that was that's just a kind of a retro compatibility thing offered by offered by system D. Okay. You can do that, it will work, you can do that, you can do init 6, init 1, blah, blah, blah. System D will understand that and will and, and we'll do that for you because he's a good guy. But if you want to be by the book, if you want to reboot, you should do systemctl reboot. Okay? Or power off to power off, okay? So if you want to be completely cutting edge, you, you should do the systemctl. However, if by any if by reflex or by habit you do init zero, it will just be fine. Uh, the the server will uh, easily power off or reboot with no with no issues, and you'll be perfectly okay. Don't worry too much about it. But what brings us here are the boot targets. So boot targets are basically similar to this. Okay, calm yourself if you are eager to just to go to the comment section. Blah 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 blah. Calm yourself. It's not exactly the same thing. I know, but to get things a little bit more clear, that that's that's what I'm going to say. So um, boot targets are goals to achieve. Where do I want to put my server at? And it's not that different in terms of results to from from the runables. Okay, calm yourself. So, but uh, we have much more um, much more targets than we had runables. So runables we had seven. We have much more targets that on system D. It's much more intricate than runables. Okay, but calm yourself. So basically, I'm going to, so I have shown you how to shut down and, and how to reboot systemctl power off, systemctl reboot. That's the similar the similar thing, and I'm going to show you that we keep the we have seen the equivalent for single user. That's where the recover roots password video comes in. Go and check it out. You'll get similar results of a single user mode. Similar, not the same, but similar. That reminds me, I have to make a. Um, a separate video for all the Linuxes. Good, good idea. And um, I'm going to show you for how to get normal no GUI and normal with GUI, which are the two main states. Okay, so if you do systemctl isolate, this is going to choose or put yourself in a specific target, and if, and, and you ha and you have the multi user dot target. Okay. Now I want you to sh to to check out the on the background what's going to happen on the server here on the background. If I do multi-user.target and this server is right now in the graphical mode, which is a graphical target, if I do isolate, you'll see that now it dropped back to a graphical, a non-graphical console. So that's the equivalent to normal, to normal with no GUI. So isolate multi-user target is going to put you on a non-GUI system, even though the GUI is installed, it's just not not running. But if you do the graphical. If you isolate to the graphical, it will just boot up the graphical user interface. Okay, so if you if you isolate yourself to the multi-user, you will get the non-graphical console by default immediately. If you isolate to graphical, you will you will go to the graphical console as usual if you have the default going to the graphical. And how do you set the default? Well, system CTL set default 
and you choose I want to go to this one or I'll go to this one. Right now, which one I have, do I have? Well, you can get it. So by default, that my default target is graphical target, which means on every reboot is going to boot into this state. Okay. And it's going to put yourself into a graphical interface on every reboot. So def the default on Rocky 1 is graphical. But the default on Rocky 2, it's the multi-user target. You can check it out right now. Rocky 2. Oh, I'm using, I cannot log in with, with, with root. But, but you can do this. Type in the password. Let's check it out. Systemctl. Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, Systemctl. Get default. And as you can see, our um, Rocky 2 is going to the multi user tar target by default because Rocky 2 does not have any graphical interface installed, which makes sense. So it's going to get the. It will not be too harmful if you put a graphical just to drop back to multi-user, but to be to be nice and, and well behaved, we have set the uh, Rocket 2 to, to by default to go to multi-user. And these are the two ones that you actually need to know. I'm going to sneeze. I will not edit this. Hi. So yeah. So isolate will put yourselves into a specific uh, into a specific target. And you have multiple targets that you can use. You can you can list them, etc. But these are the two you can, you, you are most interested in. Multi-user, it's a non-graphical mode. Graphical in target, it's a graphical mode. If you get the get this, if you use the, the get default, you will see which ones is going to get on every reboot. If you want to set a different one, you do set default. Okay, I'm going to set default for the same one. It's already there because I don't want to change it. But you would do set default and the target you want to go to on every reboot. Not every target is usable to be the default one. Some targets are kind of subsystem targets. So it's it's for the for the system to use. But these are the two ones I want you to learn and experiment with. Graphical targets, it will just go to the graphical interface if installed. Uh, Multi-user.target, it will go to the non-graphical console. And that's that, yeah, it's easy enough. If you good, if you do the set default, it will you will set the one that you will get uh, enabled on all reboots, and that's the one you choose. If it's a workstation where we work at, at every single day, the the graphical interface makes sense. If it's a, if it's a server that's kind of um, behind the scenes and you don't you don't look at it, the multi-user interface seems to me it's kind of what makes sense. That's all about chapter ten controllable target root password reset and, and and other stuff go and check my other video so the other subjects i did not cover here are covered there watch it rewatch it all the times all, all the times you as you want or need like and subscribe it really really helps and comment out also so like subscribe and comment it really, really helps yeah like subscribe and comment it really, really helps and i'll see you in the next one cheers guys